What up everybody? I'm gonna show you today one of the most powerful AI app building tools I have ever seen that can help you build an app, not in months, not in weeks, but in minutes. And I'm gonna show you how you can take that, hook that up to make, and we're gonna be running through a tutorial where I'm gonna show you the exact process of being able to build this, connect it to make, so that you can extract data from websites using AI and their emails to make it super easy for you to generate leads for your business. If you don't know me, my name is Dylan. I build AI apps, automations, and AI agents to help entrepreneurs upgrade their systems so that they can win the game of business. And so with any further delay, we're gonna be diving into the full tutorial right now. So what we have right here is a thing called Replit Agent. This Replit Agent is a revolutionary way to be able to build applications in your business. So the way that this works you can sign up for this thing, it's cheap. It's like 120 bucks a month or a year. And if you have any idea how much it costs for developers to build out systems, this is a steal. The way that we're gonna be doing this is you can log into Replit right here, sign up for the service, get into it, and you just tell the AI what it is you want to be able to build. And so what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna put in a super simple uh, prompt here so that you can do this exact same thing. Let me go ahead and grab the prompt for you. We're gonna type this prompt in just like this. Create a simple website that allows me to enter a URL and then send that URL to make.com using a webhook and the schema attached and then display that response from Make Automation on the page after clicking the button, scrape website and email. I'm also gonna take this and I'm gonna upload a simple file. Uh, the file looks like this right here and this is just a schema that basically tells the, the application what we're gonna be doing with the data and how it's gonna be used. And the, what we're gonna do to make this modification is we're gonna open up right here, we're gonna open up make.com, create a new scenario, log in here, gonna create a webhook, and we're gonna go into create a custom webhook. And we're gonna call this one website and email getter. Get her done. So I'm gonna hit save just like this, we're gonna go ahead and grab this webhook right here, and then we are gonna update that inside of the schema. And this right here is the schema we're gonna be using that we're gonna be feeding into Replit so that it understands what the request is. So we'll hit here, we'll hit save, we'll save the schema, we're gonna go inside of here, and now we're just gonna drag in the schema right inside of here, just like that, and then we are gonna add in the prompt. We're gonna put this, create a simple website that allows me to enter a URL and then send that URL to make using a webhook in the schema attached and then display the response from the make automation on the page after clicking the button called scrape website and email. So now all we need to do is hit start building. So now what it's gonna be doing is it's gonna be analyzing the request right now and look at the prompt request and then looking at the attached file, the schema. And then what it's gonna be doing is reviewing that and seeing if there's any things that it would recommend being my AI programmer to be able to build this out. It says here's the initial prototype and what it's gonna be doing is using Flask and vanilla JavaScript. And then it goes, do you wanna add an error handling or implementing a validation URL field or any of these other things like a loading indicator or history previously scraped URLs? Um, I'm gonna say, no, that's good. This, I approve and let's start the plan. So we hit that. And so right now it's starting to build this out as is, and you can see it's uh, creating the main file right now. It's now updating the, the different template information, and it's starting to build out all of the elements of this AI application itself. It's installing Flask, as you can see, and it's really doing the work of a developer, being able to build up this website really quickly. And what's amazing about this is if there's any errors, you don't need to be a programmer to fix this. You can just take screenshots of the application itself and then move that over into the system and say, here's the error, help me fix it. So you have this section right here that is essentially the chat window and you can see, boom, it already has this built, right? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab a random construction website. We're gonna open up this make that we created, this module for a webhook inside of here and we're gonna see if we get a ping. So we're gonna enter this in and it's, it goes error, okay but it looks like we got the ping and it looks like that worked fine. The arrow over here is just saying, hey, we just we didn't get any information back, what do we do next? So now that we have that and we know that that functions, 
Look at that, the website has already been built. Isn't that incredible? What we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside of here and we're gonna start to build this out. The way that we're gonna be doing this is through a couple of steps. So now that we're gonna get the data coming in from the application, we're gonna now need to make an HTTP, HTTP request. We're gonna go down here and go make a request. We're gonna grab the URL and we're gonna grab this, as you can see here, the construction data is coming in with the additional URL. Just like that, we want to parse that response. We're going to hit OK, just like that. And then the next step we're going to do is we're going to want to parse the HTML into text. And so we're going to use a function inside of here called a text parser. We open up this one and say it says HTML the text. And what we're going to be using right here is we're going to be using the data, which is the long HTML data that we're going to be getting once we ping that website. And we're going to be converting that into text just like that. Now the next piece also what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to grab the email. And the way that we're going to be using that is we're going to be using what's called a regex, which is a regular expression, which is basically just pattern matching, looking for certain types of patterns of text. And this we're going to be an email. And we're going to be doing this by going into the text parser here. And we're going to go in for advanced pattern matching just like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to be entering in this regex just like that. And basically this regex is saying, I'm looking for any numbers or symbols before the, the word or the symbol at and anything afterwards with a dot after that. So Dylan at DylanJWatkins.com, right? It's looking for any email sequence inside of here. All right, we're not going to do any global pa uh, pattern matches, which means more than one item. We'll just find the first email. We don't want it to be case sensitive. We don't need multi-line. We don't need anything else. But we do need is we need to be able to get the text from the HTML, which is right here. We click OK just like that. And then the next piece we're going to want to have is we're going to want to have that and we're going to connect to AI. AI is going to analyze the text from the website and summarize it so we know what this website's about and we can be able to make a, a summary of it to make it real easy for us. So we're going to go inside here, create Task completion, select the key, pick a model. We can use the mini. Oh, we've got the nice 01 now. That's great. But let's just use this mini. Max tokens, let's just give it a max of 4,000 just in case anything. And then we're going to want to feed it an instruction, right? And the instruction will be something along the lines of user from us. Summarize what this company does. And then we're going to insert the text that is coming from the website. Now that we've got that, we can hit save. And we've got that saved right there. And now the thing is, we're going to want to be able to take this data and send it back as a webhook response. And the way that we're going to do that, we're going to go here, webhook response. And inside this, we want to feed it a essentially a parameter, a JSON. So the way that's going to look like is we're going to go here put in the word summary, which is going to be a key pair value, put that in just like that. Open up this section messages content so we can feed it the content, close that guy up. And then we're going to feed in an email. And that email is going to be what we find from the regex right inside of here in terms of value. And once we have that, we're going to close this guy back up just like that. And now we hit save. Now this whole thing has been saved. We're going to hit run. And now we go inside of here and we're going to hit this one more time. Boom. It's going through processing. It goes expecting prop property name enclosed double quotes column one, two characters. Okay, so it's getting there. Let's see what's happening. We're going through 200. So we know that website's working. Okay, we have this text. So this is all the text from the website, great. Pattern matching, we are getting the email. The summary, we have the summary. And now we are kicking that data back inside of this format. All of that looks correct. So now if, if we're saying this is the error we're getting, the great thing about this is all we need to do is we go just like this. I'm gonna enter this in and we're gonna say, we are getting this error. Please help fix everything 
is working on the make.com backend. Enter. Just like that. And now it's thinking about it. It's analyzing the error. It's going to the application and it's going to be looking to make modifications and updates to be able to fix this issue. Cool. Now it says I'm updating the backend code to better handle the potential JSON parsing errors from the make webhook. This should help us identify the issues on our end and make the webhook response. Great. So it just edited it for us. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab this URL and we're going to dump it back in and we're going to hit, whoa, oh, there we go. We're going to dump it back in just like this and we're going to make sure that this is running again. So we have this and we're going to hit scrape. Invalid JSON from, from make. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at this. So let's open it up. It says it's an invalid JSON. We're going to open this back up. We're going to paste that in just like that. Hit save. Let's do, do a capital E. There we go. Hit save. And now that we have that correctly fixed with the proper JSON, we're going to go inside and we're going to hit scrape one more time. All right. There we go. We have the email and we have the summary. And so now we've been able to scrape emails and get a summary of who the company is. So if we want to reach out to them and use that email and a summary of what they do to be able to use uh, this as a lead generation tool, you've now built this application. Now, let's just say we wanted to actually deploy the application itself. The way that we do that, it's really simple. We go to deploy. There's various styles how we want to deploy it there's the always on recommended if you want to deploy this all you need to do is you can go here and hit set up your deployment configure and approve and this allows you to be able to then just hit deploy just like that it lets us know that this is a development server and not to be used in production cool now that we have this all set up to go we can click here and boom, here is the web app that plugs into make.com using Replit Agent, make.com, and ChatGPT to build your own custom scraper websites lead generation tool. I'll be doing many more things with this tool because it is just so powerful. And if you've got any questions, put the comments down below. I had a lot of fun building this thing, and I hope you do as well. Have a blessed and beautiful day, everybody. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye now.